So here's what God taught, trying to teach Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities that, help me out, you did not build. No painful toil and sweat. Filled with all kinds of good things that you did not provide. No painful toil and sweat. Wells that you did not painfully toil and sweat over. Vineyards and olive groves you didn't painfully toil and sweat over. And when you're eating satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, the other kingdom, out of the land of slavery. Luke chapter 12, verse 16, Jesus is telling us the mindset of the world system. In Luke chapter 12, verse 16, we'll find it here. He says this, I'm going to tell you a story, he says, in verse 12, verse 16, he told this parable, the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, what? You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. This is the mindset of the earth-cursed individual's mentality that if he can finally get enough stuff saved up, then he finally can take life easy, find something else to do besides just running after money, and be happy. And of course, God says right here, that you missed the whole thing, bud. You missed the whole thing. That's not life. You worked and did all that, and you lost it all anyway. That's not life. But that's the, that's the mentality. So again, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 says there's a Sabbath rest. You can't have rest until you have provision. They could not work on the Sabbath. So let's talk about the Sabbath. Genesis chapter 1, let's go back in time and discover the Sabbath. Again, they could not sweat on the Sabbath. <coughs> verse 31. God saw that all he, all he had made, and it was very what? It was good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all of their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. He wasn't tired. Why did he rest? Because he was finished, not tired. Everything is complete. Everything is there for man to live in the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day, made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he'd been doing. So the Sabbath, Adam lost the Sabbath. Adam lost the seventh day. He gave it away. He reverted back to an incompleteness. When you live in debt as a lifestyle, you're living in a life of incompleteness. And you're, you're you know, still running to get it complete. You're trying to complete that picture. But Adam gave it away completely, and there was no rest. There was no provision. He had to make up the differences. He had to keep surviving, keep surviving, trying to get back to that seventh day in his own strength, trying to get enough where he could stop, trying to get enough where he could stop, trying to get enough where he could stop. Because in the heart of man, I believe, there's that, there's that uh, drive. to. We know there's more than just working. Now, work can be your, don't misunderstand me, when you're in your assignment, you do work there, and there is great satisfaction. But I'd have to say most people are not in their assignment. They're living, they're living for money. They're just exchanging hours for dollars. And that is grievous after a while. When you think of the Sabbath, what do you think of? You think of a, the Sabbath, you think of Sunday, right? You think of, uh, of course, there's d different denominations that argue over that. Saturday's the Sabbath. Sunday's the Sabbath. Uh, what else do you think about? Church. Uh, it's a religious day. I think that most people, it's a day that we do things for God, kind of like a yoke. It's, you know, I, I do this. I tell people at my church, I believe a lot of people feel guilty when they don't come to church. You hear people say that? I feel guilty skipping. Why do you feel guilty missing church? You are the church. <laughs> well, you are the, what do you, because religion has taught them that this Sabbath, this Sunday is God's day. It's God's day. You know, it's, oh, it's righteous, it's holy, you know. You know what Jesus said about the Sabbath? When uh, 
his disciples were out picking grain on the Sabbath. He said, Mark chapter 2, verse 27, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Really? The Sabbath was made for man. What does that mean? The Sabbath was made for man. Why did God make the Sabbath? Let's look at Colossians chapter 2. Why was there a Sabbath? Let's find out. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a what? Shadow of the things that were to come. However, they are found in Christ. The reality of those shadows are found in Christ. They were shadows of things that were to come. The reality of the shadow, the reality of the shadow is found in Christ. When I was a young kindergartner, we did silhouettes. They would take a projector, have us sit sideways, and they would draw the outline of our profile. Anyone ever done that before? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The shadow shows you part of the character of the person, but not the life of it. You can see something of that person, but not the essence of that person. And so the Sabbath was a shadow. It's showing us an outline, some, some of its function, but not the essence of it, the life of it. So we go back to the Old Testament and say, well, what was the Sabbath? Why was there a Sabbath? Because I believe there's a couple reasons. Number one, it was a promise to man, a picture to man of what one day God was going to restore and how life is supposed to look. Finished. Everything there you need. It's holy because it's finished. You follow that? God blessed it because it's complete. It's finished. Everything was there for man. And the Sabbath day was put in place, I believe, that so man would have a chance to see what life was like. It was a picture. It was a promise. It also stopped man from running nonstop in pursuit of just existence. It caused him to stop, acknowledge God, who was his life. Otherwise, things become his life. It just forced him to stop. But basically, it was a promise of what the essence would be later when Jesus Christ fulfilled the promise. 